The Muppets Survive 9-11 by Sarcastic Stories 1 Kermit's POV Kermit sighed as he hopped off the subway. It was a cold September morning and Kermit and Miss Piggy had just started to file their divorce papers. 2001 was not Kermit's year. Along with his wife discovering his extramarital affair, Kermit had continuously worked a dead-end office job at the World Trade Center. As he walked toward the great towering building that housed his office space in the Big Apple, Kermit reflected back on his relationship with Miss Piggy. It had always been wild and thrilling to play with that smoking piece of bacon. But over time, the thrill and lust died off. Kermit felt isolated from work and Miss Piggy, which caused him to find comfort in the beds of others. It had to be Kermit's worst day ever when Miss Piggy found out on that fateful day. She'd been been suspicious for months beforehand. She had stalked Kermit's car as he cautiously drove to the slums, the most infamous modern slum of New York City. Sesame Street, once a bustling community, after the over-policing directed by former New York Governor Bloomberg in order to rid Sesame Street of apparent drug syndicates. The community became full of absent fathers and failing single mother families. In 2001, It had been known for its rampant prostitution rink, especially with poor transvestite hookers trying to make a quick buck to survive. That's where Miss Piggy caught Kermit. She caught him getting sucked off in the back alley by some red transgendered Muppet named Elmo. My God. Kermit watched as Miss Piggy curb stomped Elmo whilst calling him all the slurs known to man. After that event, no marriage counseling could stop the inevitable divorce. Kermit quickly shook the memory out of his head and entered the gargantuan tower. Every New Yorker was proud of the World Trade Center. It was seen on everything from tourist advertisements for New York to New York Post stamps. It was just as popular, if not more, than other iconic structures like the Statue of Liberty or the Empire State Building. He sighed as he took the elevator up. It was around 8.30 a.m. Kermit was early to his 9-5 to job, but he wouldn't be able to believe what would happen next. Miss Piggy's POV. She felt betrayed and lonely. Although Miss Piggy would be able to live fine with the divorce, she needed work. She was always a working girl. I mean, that's how she was able to become chief editor of her own fashion magazine. She married Kermit because he had potential just like herself. Yet financial hardship had caused Kermie to see his dreams tear in front of her on the streets of Manhattan. Guess the Muppets couldn't really take on Manhattan. He was never the same since then, and she always knew he would be unfaithful to her one day. She just didn't guess it would be so soon. Miss Piggy, what what color do you want your nails? The girl doing her pedicure, pedicure asked. Am I dumb to you? 
Miss Piggy said rhetorically. Bitch, I always say for millennial pink. Your ears must be full of wax, honey, because the next time you fucking don't listen, your ass will be fire. Yes, ma'am, said the worker. Miss Piggy slapped the worker. And don't make direct eye contact with me unless I tell you to, bitch. Just as Miss Piggy insulted the nail tech, she made sure the girl looked downward. <laughs> Miss Piggy was reading the newspaper about the new Harry Potter book series by J.K. Rowling. Miss Piggy chuckled to herself because... She thought J.K. Rowling must have been on crack to write about some gay-ass teen wizards. Miss Piggy would never be a nerd, and Harry Potter was some mega nerd shit. As she read the newspaper, the news played behind her. It was in its daily morning cycle. She had a breakfast appointment with a friend at 9.30, and it was almost 9 a.m., she quickly glanced at the TV in the corner to get the weather update, but this wouldn't be a regular weather update. From behind the reporter, Miss Piggy saw a plane fly awfully close to the World Trade Center, the same World Trade Center that Kermit worked at. Then it happened. Miss Piggy's usually pink face went white and her mouth was agape in shock. She stood still but was slightly shaken from the shock of what she just witnessed. This, this isn't real, Miss Piggy whispered, covering her pig mouth. Her nail tech looked up to see what happened on the news and her eyes bulged. Oh my God, the nail tech said. That day, while Miss Piggy was getting her nails done, she had witnessed one of the most tragic days in US history. Miss Piggy just saw a plane crash into the World Trade Center on today's date of September 11th, 2001. She finally stood up from her seat, shocked. She just realized Kermit, her ex-husband, works at the World Trade Center. Miss Piggy is no crier. She's usually a strong woman. But in the moment of realization that her former husband... Her only husband so far was in the building during the crash caused Miss Piggy to tear up and find emotions for her sexually depraved Kermit. Yet Miss Piggy does not just stand and weak. That's a bitch move. Instead, Miss Piggy does something about it. She doesn't care in this moment if her husband cheated on her with some red Muppet slut named Elmo. Her husband, for ten years, wouldn't die on Miss Piggy's watch. Kermit's POV. It all happened so fast. One minute Kermit was going to his job, and the next building, he was in a started collapse. All Kermit could remember is seeing white, then black. He didn't know for how long, but miraculously he woke up. He felt suffocated, as if he just swallowed a bunch of dust. He didn't know for how long, yet he wished he hadn't woken up, because when he did, all he could sense was the massive debris around him. It was like a nightmare being under such massive pressure. It felt as if Kermit was buried alive and he couldn't move anything. He stopped struggling because it was no use. He was going to die there. In the deathly silence of the rubble, all Kermit could do was reminisce about his life that would be soon be cut short. He thought of the first time he made love to Miss Piggy. 
It was the most exciting moment of his life. Listening to her squealing and womanly gasps as he entered her, and then being pinned against the bed by the powerful lady pig. He remembered the exotic experience of Miss Piggy violently penetrating him with her strap-on, as was usual with the couple in their early years of marriage. Kermit started to tear up, realizing Miss Piggy was the only person who truly understood him. She understood what made him angry, what made him sad, what made him happy, and what made him come. He had so much to say to her, but now he couldn't, as the debris kept crushing him. He thought of his parents, his southern hometown, and his failed theater. He thought of the rainbow connection. Kermit would have to die knowing his dreams would never come to fruition. His dream of his talk show. Not like they would if he was alive, because... He had to give up on those dreams and his idealism when he faced with the harsh reality of Manhattan. If Kermit realized how many regrets he had, how many projects he left unfinished, and how much he hadn't said, he had made a promise that if he lived through this, that he would live life without regret. That was his last thought before he passed out again. He was assured that his death was inevitable. But that's when the white light came. He looked up, believing to see Jesus. And Jesus spoke to Kermit. Oh my gosh, he's alive! Th- report, report back. This is Gonzo, part of the New York Fire Department. We found a survivor. Kermit chuckled his last breath. Turns out Jesus' name is Gonzo that Kermit finally blocked out. Kermy, Kermy, it's me, Kermy, my little Kermy. Please wake up. I love you. Was Kermit in heaven? He heard Miss Piggy's voice, but he was sure that she wasn't dead. Kermit opened his eyes. Hey, it's Kermit the Frog here, and am I dead? Kermit looked around not to see the pearly white gates of heaven or the internal inferno of hell. But instead he saw a hospital room with machines everywhere, monitoring monitoring his every move. He looked to his right to see Miss Piggy. Mm, Hello, Kermit the Frog here. Miss Piggy, is that you? Oh, Kermit, you are alive! Miss Piggy exclaimed as she started to hug Kermit and cry. Oh, Kermit! I love you, and I never want to leave you. We don't need a divorce. We can work it out. Hello, Kermit the Frog here, and I love you too, Miss Piggy, Kermit said as the two just held each other in the hospital. That's when Kermit noticed a familiar figure in the back. Hello, Kermit the Frog here. Hey, who are you? Kermit said, pointed to the long-nosed Muppet. The blue Muppet stood awkwardly. Hey, um, my name is Gonzo. I was the one that found you at Ground Zero. You know. Hello, you know, I thought you were Jesus, Kermit said. I mean, you're basically my savior. I'm Kermit the Frog, and I'm forever grateful. But what happened in the first place? I can't even remember. Gonzo responded. A terrorist organization called Al-Qaeda hijacked multiple planes and in order to destroy key American locations. One went to the Pentagon. Some went off course and crashed somewhere in Pennsylvania, we think. And of course, one happened to hit the building you were in, the World Trade Center. So far, we don't know who survived, but we're estimating that thousands died. Kermit gasped. In his entire life, he never thought that America would be attacked by terrorists, especially at home. Oh, those damn terrorists, Miss Piggy said under her breath. Everything is going to change. I just know it. Kermit gazed lovingly at Miss Piggy. Oh, Miss Piggy, so many people died today. And I agree, the world will never be the same. But today, on September 11th, 
9-11, our marriage was saved. Miss Piggy nodded and squeezed Kermit's hand. I thought I was going to die, Miss Piggy. But in those moments, I promised myself I was not going to live with regrets. Miss Piggy, I am going to start the Muppet Show, and it will succeed this time. Oh, Kermie, that's all I ever wanted, she said as she kissed him. The Muppets will take on Manhattan. Let's renew our vows. And this is how 9-11 started the Muppet Show. The end.